Hi, this is Young John, and today we're going to check out the Vivitech Qumi Q5 LED projector. <laughs> Tiny little thing, the power of LED technology. Things have shrunk so much that this projector is almost the size of a CD. Place a CD over the LED projector and it almost covers the whole thing up. With something this size, you don't need to buy a large projector anymore that weighs a ton with lamps that go out every year that you have to replace. It also comes with four different cables. It comes with HDMI to HDMI, HDMI to MHL. It also comes with an RCA cable for your video audio left and right. And it comes with a VGA cable for old school computers. You also have your plug-in charger, a wee little remote control, and a velvety case for your Qumi when you travel around. As we look around this unit, you'll notice a lot of grills in the front, the side, and on the bottom which dissipates the heat that's going to be generated. So I wouldn't advise putting this on your lap. Uh, give it some space and let the air flow in and out into the world. On top of the Q5, you have touch sensitive inputs that emulate the remote control. On the front part is the projector. On the left side is the focus ring. On the back side are all the input output ports. And on the bottom are two little stickers. The larger sticker is for an optional battery pack that you can buy separately. And the smaller sticker is for a quarter inch screw. No table, no problem. All you need is a tripod to mount your Qumi Q5 to. I've been using the Qumi Q5 for all sorts of things. I've been watching movies, playing games, listening to music, playing more games. Dude, I lost. It's not only fun in games. I've been using this for more serious business. Otakusandgeeks.com bringing you the best in entertainment and Japanese thingies. But all this is easy for the Q5 because you're using a computer which is doing most of the work and it's sending a video feed right into the Qumi. The real magic is the software applications built into it. You know what that means? It means you don't have to lug around the computer anymore. All you need is this projector and a little flash drive or an external hard drive. We have the Qumi Q5 here attached to a flash drive. It can also just as easily be connected to a portable or an external hard drive. Let's turn off the light and go through the menus. First, let's play a movie. You go to the movie, it's accessing the flash drive, and I've already sectioned it out to different folders to reach them easily. All right, let's play a video. I'm going to select the new Robotech remake. It's loading. happens at the end of this video? Does it jump to the next video or just go back to the file folder? Oh, it's loading the next video. Okay, so that is the video player and I want to see if it can play something other than mp4s or movs. Let's play an flv file, see what happens. Okay, so it plays FLV files too. Let's exit and see if it can also play something else like an MKV file. Let's play that. It works. So in, so in addition to MP4s and MOVs, it also plays MKVs and uh, FLV files, which are flash videos. Video player is a big hit. Let's go to music player. Go to my music. 
and play an MP3. Okay, so this seems to be the interface. I guess that's... Okay, just skip to the previous song. So I guess it doesn't go fast forward or rewind. It just goes to the next song. I'm gonna hold the button down to see if it'll fast forward. And it doesn't do it. So it's just skipping around. It doesn't fast forward or rewind. channel only and stereo channel. So maybe the single play. This looks like shuffle. Looks like repeat once and I guess this is repeat all. Alright, excellent. Music player is A-OK. -okay. It does say that it plays AUG files and APE files. It doesn't say that it plays FLAX, although I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Let's exit. Let's move on to Office Viewer. And look at all the different kinds of documents it can play. All right, this is a Word document. And up, oh, it opens it up. Let's zoom in by pressing the middle button on the, on the remote control. Word documents open just fine. Great. Let's exit. And test out a PowerPoint slide. Otakusandgeeks.com I'm going to go to the next page. This is a two-page PowerPoint that I just made quickly. I put in a text box and an image of yours truly and it renders the fonts okay too. If you see the second line there, it's a serif font in Times New Roman, and the first line is an Arial, which is the default. So, yep, PowerPoint works just fine. Let's exit and take a look at something else. Spreadsheet. Now in this spreadsheet, I put in a couple of, oh, it's really tiny. Let's zoom in by pressing that middle button again. Zoom in, not out. <laughs> okay. So I put in a number for an assumed wage and I made some calculations to get the per hour rage, the in time, the out time, and it seems to work just fine. And the rates by hour, the 1.5 time over time, I did a formula for time and a half and two times over time. So formulas seem to work just fine. Excellent. Spreadsheet works great. Let's do a PDF test. And this is of the QME Q5 manual that came along with our QME unit. Let's find something interesting and zoom in. This is interesting. All right, let's zoom in. Zoomed in and rendered. You can see the, the text smooths out by itself. Uh, a little bit of artifacting, but that's okay because most of what I want to see is showing right up. Great, so PDF files are a go. And the last one here is a text file. It's a simple text file that I typed up on my computer. It's very tiny text, so let's zoom in again. Use the remote to move up. This folder contains the following test files, and we have gone through all of those test files, which is a Word document, the PDF, PowerPoint slide, the uh, Excel sheet and this text file. So great, it opens up the text file just fine. So, so far we've seen movies, play MP3 files, we've seen it open up several office documents, and now for the finale we will open photographs. USB. Well, this one seems a little different. Instead of folders going up and down, it's left and right, but it is a different app. So let's open up photos. And I have a collection, a small collection of photos that I've taken over uh, the years. And this is a cosplayer at New York Comic Con. 
It's at West 4th Street. The trumpet player is playing music and a dog is just jumping up at him, which is kind of funny. And this was at kind of a Renaissance Fair at Fort Tryon Park. And the Romans are coming. Arr, look out. There's Riding Hood with his Lady Marion. This was at a fashion show. Ah, yes. Wintertime at uh, Bethesda Fountain in Central Park. They were doing ice carvings. I fold a bit of origami. I did not fold this one because this is way too complex for me. But someone did fold a praying mantis. Another guy folded this dragon here. I think it's one sheet of paper, which is amazing. And an octopus. Ooh, this is really ornate. And the paper is really interesting too. This was also at Comic-Con. I forget the name of the comic or the game, but if you know it, uh, write it in the comments. But they were awesome. And this looks like Sailor Moon except uh, the guy version. Adventure of Link. This is from a Zelda video game from Nintendo. This kid was an awesome cosplayer. Lara Croft, also from Comic-Con. This is from a video game. And that's it. And I guess at the last image, it recycles to the first one. All right. So there's another folder called non-JP, and it doesn't show it because this software shows JPEGs, BMP files, but it doesn't play uh, GIFs, GIFs, and it doesn't show images that are larger than 3,000, 4,000 pixels. Uh, I put a really big, big picture in here, and it doesn't seem to be able to show it, so... They were not kidding. And that's it. One more thing that I want to show is this amazing thing. I think it's amazing. It's called keystoning. Here's the menu button. Now, sometimes you're not going to be able to find a flat table. So when the image goes up like this, the top will get wider than the bottom. And this function is called keystone where it fixes it up. So I'm going to go to menu, uh, menu, there we are. Go to installation where there's an option called keystone. Now you can manually keystone and you can see that the corner, the upper corner is getting smaller. Ah, that's amazing. That's really amazing, I think. See that? And I'll bring it back to zero. So you can see how it is originally. It's like that. You can do it manually. Or you can go to advanced. And auto keystone. And watch. There we go. See that? It magically auto keystones by itself. Boom. And. Boom. Ah, this is amazing. There's a lot inside this menu to play around with, but that was the main one that I wanted to show because that seemed to be a really, really useful bit. Boom. And thus ends our journey into the QME Q5 application menu system. Kudos, Vivitech. Well done. The Vivitech QME Q5 is small, lightweight, and extremely bright for its size. Sure, it might be on the expensive side and run a little hot and make a bit of noise, but this is definitely worth looking into for something so small to offer so much in terms of applications and what it can do. Player, player, it's not a player, it's an LED projector. Slate this. Ow, my ears. This is almost the size of a CD player player of a CD. <laughs> this is Young John in conjunction with Otakus and Geeks.com, bringing you the Vivitech QME Q5 projector. Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> and if you like the video, please subscribe below and I shall see you again next time.